Hello and welcome to Soul Love with Kimness. I am Kim van der Zanden, your host, and I'm super excited to share another episode of Soul Love with you, where we share inspirational and empowering stories from the heart. We talk about the beauty and the shadows as both are part of the ascension journey, to remind you that you are powerful, you are magical, and to have trust in what you feel to be true deep within. Enjoy this next episode of Soul Love. Before we start the next Soul Love conversation, I want to invite you to check out my amazing book, Activating the Flower of Love, a sacred guide for manifesting your deepest desires and highest calling. This sacred book filled with powerful tools and activations will guide you to open your heart to the beauty and wisdom within you, empowering you to create the life you deeply desire from the foundation of love. You can find Activating the Flower of Love in all the major online and offline bookstores in ebook or paperback, or you can check it out through my website, kimnes.nl, where you can also discover the different ways of working with me and the latest updates on new starting programs. Enjoy this next episode of Soul Love. Welcome everyone to a new episode of Soul Love and today I have the honor to share a sacred conversation with Margot Fraser. Welcome within this sacred space. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. I'm I'm excited and honored to be here and yeah, let's see where we go today. <laughs> yes, I love it. And you're at this moment you're traveling so you're in Australia so you're you're bringing the sun coat with us in this beautiful country. Absolutely. I'm normally in Canada where it's uh, winter time now, but yes. I'm down in Australia for a few months and yeah, taking in uh, different frequencies of nature here and sacred sites and meeting with uh, people that I've met online only before and getting a chance yes. to have that beautiful intimate face-to-face -face connection so yeah I think that's beautiful and there's something magical that happens I noticed that as well when you suddenly meet someone in real life it gets in another depth in your connection or in your there's something in also physical having a cup of tea or having a conversation and a hug and uh, yeah but I think it's beautiful and, and I think you're on a beautiful path in inspiring others to stand in their truth and stand in their power and remember who they are and I, I want to start maybe this conversation by what sparked you on this path and what guided you to to step into this role as a as a master teacher. And yeah, because for some of us also tuning in, like it, it's it, it's understanding it's a journey. So it's beautiful to. Exactly, exactly. And so for me, I'm not one of those people that had some like big either traumatic event or like this big lightning bolt, like, you know, spiritual opening all at once. It was more of a journey of kind of step by step and things opening up. I definitely had an openness mm -hmm. in me, a curiosity, let's call it that. Always curious, curious yes. about nature, curious about this, that, how does that, how does that work? What's that about? And things that I also bumped up against, say in conventional religion, like yes. many of many people, right, went to church yeah. as a kid, Sunday school and so on. But there was something in me that could never reconcile this God that was all loving. Mm -hmm. And yet you're telling me these stories of David and Goliath, where like God's choosing kind of one over the other. Yeah. Like, yes. I couldn't get it. <laughs> How yeah. is that? I, I can't make sense of that. You know, and so you go along your path. I, you know, went to university like many people did in a more science-based area. Uh, did a master's degree. I, I actually really enjoyed. I loved learning. Again, that yeah. curiosity. Yeah. Probably if I knew all the things about myself that I know now, it would have been a little different. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> of course, for a lot of but us, there was right? still so much right yeah. in it. And um, I was in sport, very competitive in figure skating and then speed skating. So I've oh, been to the yes. Netherlands a few yes. times. Yes. <laughs> Many times actually, <laughs> even to the I'm little coaching. town where I'm living. I think it's so much yeah, fun. Yeah, I've even been there. It's so, so <laughs> yes. awesome. Um, and so there was a lot of learning along the way in that arena. Yes. We were very open to trying more holistic things. I would say in like the Germans that we met, you know, this you get to know, right? People yeah. and and the people from the Netherlands, like there was more use of holistic methods 
than we were typically seeing in Canada and the, the US. Mm. But we were able to kind of pick up some things. Oh, okay, well, let's let's see. Let's be trying things like acupuncture, you know, when our skaters are injured and these different modalities, Reiki, you know, that was, we're back in the, the 90s here, yes. right? <laughs> well, a lot of people didn't know about that. Yes. But sport kind of, high level sport, you know, you get into all these different niches and then it just starts open you more and more and I think being in sport gets you in your body yeah that's yes. one thing like when I when I was figure skating as a little kid you also take a lot of dance classes mm -hmm. and so yeah. you have to be in your body right yes. and I think the wisdom of that really having this deep connection yeah with the body and letting it guide so there was something in that that help to keep me moving forward, finding my flow. There definitely was a resonance for me, like, oh, this feels good and this doesn't yes. feel good that helped me to navigate my path. And then I was kind of in a lot of um, different relate. I didn't have that many relationships. I shouldn't say that, like a whole bunch of different partners and so on. But going through, I kind of got this sense like, hmm, these aren't working out. I'm a common denominator. Mm. What's going, what's, you know, how can I learn more about myself? Yes. Right. With the view to really fostering partnership. Mm. And so I started kind of following that path a bit. Mm. And then in that path, it opened me up to summits because these people were on telesummits, which I, in my area, ergonomics, you know, there that was not the no, way, right? Yes. Conferences and yes. in-person workshops and, you know, yeah. these professional methods. Um, and that introduced me to so many other different ways and methodologies. And I heard a woman on one of them that I can't even remember what she was speaking on. I was just like, oh, I need to do that program. Yeah. And her name was Crystal Hughes. She runs the Academy for the Soul. And so I went through that. It's all about opening up your intuitive capacities. Mm -hmm. And very early in that process, I also learned about human design. And I'm like, hmm, I'm going to have a reading on this. Took me a while to get that done. But then it was like, how do they know all this about me? <laughs> and then it was like, okay, I got to learn more about this. And I really, I've got a, a, a mind that really investigates Again, yeah. so I like looked at all the different, you know, pathways that you can take to learning all the different people that teach and so on. And I wanted to get as close to um, the, the horse's mouth, so to speak, because Ra had passed away at this point um, as I could. And I wanted different perspectives. So I went through the International Human Design School and here there not only can you do your professional certification but you can go really deep you can yeah. learn about human design in intimacy mm -hmm. human design in caring yeah learning styles yes. <laughs> there's so much to be extricated the dream time how we're conditioned during the dream time we talk so much about um the messages in the dreams but there is also a lot of not self conditioning that happens in the oh, wow. the dream time yeah. And how do you enhance at a deeper level your brain body system? What is your specific view, your way of looking at the world? So I went, I went deep. I went, did them all. I did all the courses through there that you possibly could. The one thing, it's so amazing at giving you your operating manual, but sometimes giving people the awareness is not enough. Mm -hmm. They can't break through those shadow aspects, those limiting beliefs and yeah. so on. And that's where the, the healing part yeah. and doing the energy work can be so helpful. So it's really kind of come into this, this nice marriage. Yes. Yeah. The two, yeah. you know, I just finished running an in, the intimacy program, you know, yeah. analyzing people, helping them to look at their designs, specifically how they're wired and intimacy, what calls them in. And it just is so much relief going through and understanding but I also guided them through a workshop where we we're healing and releasing um, all the things we've made up about ourselves that yeah. you know there's something wrong with me mm. in yeah. in intimacy right yeah. what's what's wrong with me here 
And so that's that's really um, how it flowed for me. It wasn't this, as I say, this big boom nope, <laughs> moment. Nope. It was just a series. And I've always been so connected to nature. Yeah. And then really starting to get the messages from nature, seeing the the, the mystical within mm-hmm. nature, the energetic messages, you know, on top of all the physical attributes of yeah. the different nature beings and kind of weaving their frequencies mm-hmm. in as well to help people in healing. And I had a very profound for me moment when I was, I was hiking in this area on the West coast of Canada. And I was in this forest where there was a lot of what we call blow down a lot of the wind had come through really and blowing down a lot of trees. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of dead, dead trees, dead fall there. And I, I had this thought when I went through like, Oh, it's, this is not a very pretty forest. And then I caught myself when I went, <laughs> who's saying that? What aspect saying that? Yeah, And I was like, wait a minute, let's just see what's, what is, so what is really within the frequency of this? And it was beautiful. I could feel this essence of like the deva of the forest who helps these beings, these beautiful plant mm-hmm. kingdom beings in their transition phase. Yeah. And it was amazing. And it, it like I was crying <laughs> and now it's bringing tears by eyes now and recognizing that's true for us too. We're part of nature yeah. that we are looked after, that there is this support there for us. Yeah. So yeah, many different experiences that have just bit by bit woven together mm-hmm. and taking time for the contemplation, I think is so important. We get so busy in our lives, jumping from this to this, to this, to this. But if we don't stop and reflect, we don't get the wisdom. And then we got to repeat. Yes. <laughs> we got to repeat the lesson, right? Yes, it is. Yes. Again, in a different way. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about my, my journey. I, I love in your story, like, but it's also, you see it in your energy and in your eyes, like the, the curiosity, the, the being open to just receiving new ideas or, or fresh concepts or, and I think, I think it's also beautiful that because we don't per se need this, this big thing that brings us on our path, but we need to be open. We need to be curious. We need to be willing to learn things about ourselves and i think it's beautiful in your there were so many beautiful gems in what you share but also you in the in the ice skating because there's so much wisdom in our bodies in ourselves but we need to get in communication and we need to learn to speak the language of our bodies again and i think it's beautiful through you because ice skating dancing you need to be very aware of what what is your body capable of and you in in yes. communication in a intimate communication with yourselves with every part of you and i think that's beautiful how your life in many different ways, like prepared you to step into the role where you are right now. And I think for everyone tuning in, it's also trusting these inspirations where you felt like, okay, there is an interest in this course or human design, or there is this sacred chest and I don't know where the path may lead me, but I know I need to do this. I know there is a, there is something calling me there. And and also being willing to to really look in the mirror because that is where where the power is like go discover yourself your soul your inner nature and just like the outer nature because it's just a mirror so what do you see and what do, what do you come back to these subtle energies of our being because there's so much wisdom so much magic so that's what i i also loved as you shared at the end because it's in the deepening it's not in constantly learning new things because our mind likes constant new concepts and new awarenesses. And okay, now exactly. I can, now this is the, the, the problem or now this is the focus area or now this or now this. And then you'll constantly keep busy, but this vessel is still there in the same condition because you're looking there or you're looking there instead of just going within and seeing, okay, but in the stillness, what is really resonating? What is really calling? What is really bubbling up? And I love that as you shared, like also standing in that place in nature. Like there's nothing wrong. It's like our mind that labels, but it's our soul. And it's also mother earth goes through these cycles of death and rebirth, just as us, as we do in our own energetic ways and in our own. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah. And the combining, because that's so powerful because our that's also what I love with astrology. Like I had a beautiful soul share more about astrology as well. And, and, and it looks like our mind likes the understanding, like if something happens or we feel triggered and okay, some shifts in the planets are happening and then suddenly our mind, because there's 
and understanding can have compassion. <laughs> we can suddenly have compassion and love for ourselves. And that's the same with human design. If we understand our patterns, our triggers, all of that, we suddenly can have compassion, but it doesn't mean that is the fix. We don't need to fix anything, but it doesn't mean that is. So I love that you then combine the energy work because in that it's the deepening in yourself and the softening and the coming to this, again, subtle energy of, yeah. And I, and as well, just as we step into this space, we also deepen in ourselves. So I don't know, as you deepened into this relationship within the human design, these intimate relationships, how did your your relationship with others change? Or how how did your intimate relationship with yourself and with a partner, or because you shared you had a couple of relationships that yeah brought you yeah, on this? Yeah, yeah. So what really shifted for me was not having to or trying to force my point of view or perspective onto the other yeah. and really being able to hold space mm -hmm. within the conversation for the other to speak and finish <laughs> what they're talking yeah. about, to be able to pause and pause with them. Yes. And not feel like I got to jump in right then and fill that space yeah right to let them gather their thoughts mm -hmm. and and then be able to really respond to that and that's really had an impact with the, you know that's for me to be able to do it means something shifted in me between my own masculine and feminine energies right that they're able to kind of work together partner together yeah. and sit back and be okay. And it was a really great compliment to me. Um, I was still doing some ergonomics work and I sat on the international board um, and the president was, most of the people were male. <laughs> the president was male. The president, the past president was male, beautiful man. Um, and the, the one who was the president, you know, he's from an Asian country English is not his first language, right? To give that space for him to speak. And then the other man that I was talking about, you know, said, wow, like you really just allow him yeah. to like, you create this space. I can't remember the exact way he said the words, but it was just like, wow, thank yes. you. Like he recognized it. And it's also speaking to me about as we shift within ourselves, we are bringing back, of course, more of the divine feminine, bringing back the connection to the divine feminine so much that was suppressed. Yeah. And it's opening up space for the divine masculine to step forward as well. We can do this work on the divine feminine, but if the masculine's not coming along, no. Yes. Right, that active, we still have the imbalance. Uh, oh, young principle. Yes. Yeah, like, where's the where's the action going to happen there? So, um, yeah. So I think that's that's part of that shift and part of coming into that subtle energy. And most, um, I'm seeing more and more men who are willing to, yes, to yeah. come into this. Right, come into the spiritual realm and understand that they have masculine and feminine energies and what the patriarchal influences and by that i mean that philosophy of domination control mm. um you know everything's got to be controlled there can't be any wildness there can't be any chaos yes. or so that ec ecstatic <laughs> dance like whoa like control yourself people yeah. right yeah. contain yes. that yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and don't right. be so too much to realize they that. have that balance they need to yes. open that up yeah. right and navigate their way and it's so important for all of us i think to bring compassion to ourselves um to our relationships understand that yes we are trying to navigate and bring that connection with our divine feminine for mm -hmm. but also with our divine masculine yeah and you know wow when i think of the impact too on men like you know don't be emotional yeah. be in control, make things happen. Yes. And I look at their human design for most of it, it's like, oh, you're not yeah. wired for that. 
that's fine. <laughs> I get that. You know, I can look at that too and say, look, at you're not a focus person. You know, no, you're a big no. picture person, you know, or yeah. you don't have to control everything. And uh, you need to get in touch with your emotions because it, it's what guides you. So, yeah, they're trying to navigate too. Yes. No, oh, I think in a this. powerful way. Yeah. Because for, well, in general, for us women, it's more easy to talk about our emotions or to talk about what we feel or, but for men, I, I think, I, I'm, I think it's very brave and I think it's very necessary. Mm -hmm. And I, I celebrate all of them for stepping in this path yes. because they have from the old paradigms, they have so much more hurdles sometimes to overcome. Like uh, indeed, well, you need to be strong. Don't cry. Don't, don't, don't talk about your emotions. You need to go on you need to provide and you need to all of these templates that are upon them. And I think it's very brave to step into the space because it's so needed these examples of divine men or yeah men who are in this divinity with both of their parts and who stand in this purity all of that we women and men but it's beautiful that there is coming more attention for that as well because it's not only yes, yes. the divine feminine rising no we also need the divine masculine and in balance <laughs> in harmony in love with each other and that creates yes. ripple exactly. but i love how the human design can help the mind to understand because for a lot of people or souls, it's immediately going into energy work or the realms that are not tangible. It's 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 a big leap. And I think it's beautiful how a thing as the human design also then can help. Like, okay, this is your design. So you can, and in the end, we choose. So it's, the, it's, not, it's not per se that we need to live that way. But when we get to understand our, like uh, human design, but our design, it's coming back to yeah. when we came to this earth star, we brought gifts, talents tools, learnings with us, all of it. And it is within our bodies. It is within our souls, within our blueprint, within our DNA. And it is coming back to understanding that. And there are multiple beautiful modalities that can all give us puzzle pieces. I always love to see it, even our birth date, because the moment we choose to came to the earth star, there is information there. We, did, we didn't choose that randomly. No, the, the stars <laughs> aligned at a certain place because we wanted certain gifts and talents. We wanted certain remembering points. And I love how human design as well. It are remembering points and go in interaction with who you are and, and, and discover what like it's yeah, coming back to this deeper understanding of yourself. Yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. No. No. It's one of the biggest, you know, I think things that just squashes us yeah. down, like the whole experimental way and trial and error. Like a lot of people are designed to go through a trial and error process and they've yeah. been so beaten down by, you know, oh, you didn't get that right. You know, yeah. we all got to watch that. You know, yeah. we got to be more compassionate with our own mistakes yes, yes and yes. with those of others where you know I, you're watching the news and like where people are so fast to leap onto yeah. criticizing right yes. someone that says something that's wrong and yet we've all done it where what comes out of our mouth and what was in our head yes not to know no <laughs> i just say that you know or, or, wait a minute you know sometimes you catch it sometimes you don't and uh yeah so i think that you know letting go of the perfectionist yes yeah tendencies yes you can move toward perfection but know that that's a moving target yes it so is so don't get too wrapped and we up learn. In we learn through the experiences that's in my whole life i i am a trial and error person so i try so i i, I just leap when i feel my heart is i i just leap and then sometimes it works out and sometimes it's not but my soul always learned something from it and i meet beautiful people or something else opens up and if i didn't just like this podcast a year ago, almost, well, more than a year ago, I started this podcast. And a year later, there was already a book after. But if I didn't start at the beginning and it wasn't perfect, I just copy paste and all of like yeah. it was just a simple. But it's beautiful. And if I didn't leap then and if I didn't trial and error, it didn't unfold in beautiful ways as it did. And it's just, yes, yeah. it's saying yes to the experience. But that again comes back that we feel confident again within ourselves and that we know our capabilities, we know our powers, we know our weaknesses. It's coming back to understanding our beautiful vessel and this earthly journey and and yeah, so that we can step, so that we can say yes and step into this space of experiences and non-judgment. And I think that's a powerful thing as well because it's also understanding sometimes our programming will bring up certain things as a judgment, but then we have a choice to express it because that's a different dimension of bringing it into the world. There's one thing to think about it, but that's then you right, can, right. with love, you can harmonize it. But to express it, that's a whole, you really, it's understanding that through our words. That's also in this conversation. We're, we're alchemizing energy. 
there's so much more coming through beyond these words. If you just listen with your eyes closed, with your eyes closed, and you feel the energy, but it's understanding the power each one of us holds, whether you're conscious aware of it or not. So, if the world could indeed could be more compassionate, but that again is stopping this inner balance, because it is the inner critic that is in the end the disbalance in our own field that expresses the yeah. outward. So I think it's beautiful. What 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 has really helped you? If you would say a couple of things, like really helped you to 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 step more in your light and in your truth and in the space where you're standing. You already shared a couple of beautiful gems, but maybe there's a thing you feel yeah, like being being willing to stretch myself despite the fears that are there. Yes, a powerful one. Yes, you know we have fears of failure and rejection and so on, but to really face those mm -hmm. and the mind often makes them so much bigger than they really yes. are. Yes. And to go, okay, I see you. Yes. <laughs> I see you there, right? In yes. certain read the modalities, we can really get into why they're there too, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. To release them and yeah. transform them into something that is helpful for us. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of bit by bit being willing to stretch and get out of the comfort zone and um, try, try those things. And that, again, that's where I guess that fear of um, trying to be perfect mm -hmm. can come in and kind of take you out. Yes. Yeah. And we don't want to get stuck mm -hmm. in that, right? Or nothing. So we're just going to be spinning our wheels yeah. or we're going to, you know, finish our life with regrets. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Why didn't I just do it? <laughs> Why didn't I just try that? And it doesn't even have to be a great big thing, right? You can break things down into some pretty small yes. steps, pretty small packages to take that next little piece mm. and move forward. So I think that's part of it. I think it's really helped me being out in nature. Yes. And because I go to places that often other people don't go to, I go to some pretty remote places, you are put in situations where you must stretch yourself yeah. in those cases. So, yeah. And, and again, it, I'm going big sometimes in those cases, but it's not like I just got dropped in without any skills. No. I don't want to make I want to make that really clear. I've worked up to that. I'm a whitewater canoeist, but I took lessons like other people. I challenged myself bit by bit. You know, yes. a little river it used to be like a little wave like this. Was like, hey, and then now you can get into you know class two, yes. class three. Um, they're called like bigger and bigger oh, yeah. um, waves and so yes. on, right? But it, that's not. I just didn't go from here to there. No, like that. Yeah, it was years of you know learning and and taking that next little step and being with people who were ahead of me right who mm -hmm. were experts who could help to guide me along yeah. that pathway as well geez yes. I would never want to just jump in my canoe by myself on some river yeah. that <laughs> I don't know what's there well, an error right? is not in place there no <laughs> yeah right so um yes so in many ways you can kind of have those little um safety Yes. What, what's the word I'm looking for here? A little, little, you know, you can have yes. that spiritually mentors too. Or, connecting yes. in with your guides, connecting in yes. with your spiritual mentors. You know, yes. there's lots of, lots of support out yes. there for you on the path. We are relational beings. Mm. And I yeah. think that's another part. A lot of times we think we got to go it alone, mm. right? That the journey is to be taken alone. And that's not what we came to earth to do we're not here to be hermits no <laughs> <laughs> even people with the hermit archetype in their design yes. the other part of their archetype is not a hermit it's much it's more external yeah. so yeah it's it's also calling in that support and being willing to take that support yeah. there's a lot of fear again mm -hmm. because of ancient paradigms around support and some of it still plays out but the more you connect with yourself, the more you're going to start calling in yes. the yeah. resonant support. 
Yes. Let's call it right, a good resonance yeah. where there's this mutual collaboration and cooperation and, you know, they're supporting you maybe sometimes more one time and you're supporting them more another time. But there starts to be partnerships. Like this is really where we're going. As you mentioned yes. before, it's it's not just flipping from patriarchy to matrilineal. No, it's a yes. weaving together and true partnership and merging here. Um, you know, that's kind of the, we maybe had to go there to get a little more empowered um, in our, our journey, mm -hmm. kind of the, um, the feminine power movement, you yes. know, but it was often done by taking on the masculine mm -hmm. way of doing yes. things, dominating yes. control, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. And now it's like, oh my gosh, we're getting burnt out. Yes. That. Yeah, because you're still doing this. It costs a lot of energy because you're still yeah. resisting. Or you're still, yeah. Yes. So I, yeah, I think it's just the continuing to shift perspectives, yeah. uh, being open to other ways, really thinking about what are the foundational values mm. that you want to have in your life. So if partnerships, the foundational value you want to have. Mm. Hmm. You got to really, again, like you said, look in that mirror. Yes. And where am I not acting in partnership? Yeah. Okay. How am I going to shift that? Yes. Yeah. Right. The feminine tends to, the shadow feminine has her own weapons, their yeah. words, usually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. Where maybe do I need to put my own weapons away? Yeah, but it's understanding that that also the universe works in frequency. So we can say a, a certain thing, but if our whole energy field is doing something else, then yeah, exactly, then nothing is is changing. Or but mm -hmm. again, it's also understanding that as we choose to grow and expand, like slower vibrations will come up or our fears come up, because otherwise we would already step into that next level. Otherwise, we would already manifest it. And it's truly understanding yeah. that you're not doing something wrong. You're choosing to grow. And that's why sometimes deep-rooted fears come up because yeah. they can't elevate with you. They they need to be harmonized or seen, acknowledged, loved, expressed. And by yeah. that, you soften your field and suddenly you see an opening coming up. So what I love as well that you're also giving the example of the river because it's beautiful. It is taking it step by step. You don't start the big waves at once. And it's also understanding that sometimes we need support also in our growth journeys. I have some certain blind spots sometimes and we need support that someone else holding space for us to go deeper because we also have safety mechanisms. So it doesn't like we can't do this journey on our, on our own. And it's indeed partnership. And how am I in partnership with myself and in energy and in that? How can I relate to others? So I think there are so many beautiful jams in that. And it's really being open to don't be afraid of your fears <laughs> that's a really but it is don't be afraid of your fears because you want yeah. to grow you want to expand you don't you don't want your life otherwise you're not listening to this podcast you don't want your life to stay the same for the rest of of your life no you want yeah, something yeah. more magical more deeply soul fulfilling but that means if you want soul fulfillment it means loving all that you are and and accepting the 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 initiations of growth and and all that is coming on your path because it's supporting you to remember more deeply who you are and to come back to what is your design, what is your power, what is your 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 lessons, what are your growth opportunities, all of it. And it's understanding. So I love because you really bring the energy of curiosity and it's almost like a childlike wonder. I like it's also this sparkling <laughs> energy out of your eyes that is just radiating and glowing. Yeah, but if we can if we can look like it doesn't mean life will always be easy. We'll always yeah, be happy. exactly. Right? It's knowing that we're doing it for a reason and it's to come more home to the purest version of ourselves so that we can live the life we're truly meant to live here. And in all the abundance, in all the experiences, in all the emotions and everything that is part of this human experience. Yeah, yeah I, I really like that part about, you know, befriending the fears, right? Yeah. Like the whole way was to push things away. Yes. Right? Push it away yes. and just do it anyways. Push it away. Yes. No, they're coming up because they want to be acknowledged. And yeah. those fears, you know, they have a, a root somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. these shadow aspects, they yeah. they have helped you survive. Yes. <laughs> right? yes. Yeah. In your different timelines, like yes. they've helped yeah. you survive. They're just not serving you now yes. in this time, in this place. And it's like, okay, wow. Like... I have a fear of making a mistake, you know, in, in that case or whatever it might be. And 
Oh, I see. Oh, I see. You can even yeah. bring some humor to it. Hello, yes. here. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. I sometimes I see, see this. It's sitting as a big mama bear and this teenager is raging there. And I just sit and I say, yes, you're, you're allowed to do that. I will sit here in love. And I said, yeah, so yeah, I get it. Yeah, but it's it's being with compassion because it's also understanding. We keep pushing, we can, that's it because we're living in this free will conscious choice. So we can keep pushing those parts away. That's your choice. But in the end, we will keep them alive. And sometimes they even build more momentum. They become stronger. If, if it was an, an, an anger teenager, they will become more angry because you're not listening. You're not, and they will manifest all kinds of things in your life you do not want. So the moment you really want change, it's you taking time to sit with this angry teenager of yourself and to witness her or him in all that she wants to express. And in that, suddenly you see that there's so much beauty, there's so much love, there's so much wisdom and the energy opens up and suddenly things start to shift in your whole world. And uh, yeah, but it's it's understanding and, and it's not about judgment because even if you feel like you want to repeat certain patterns consciously or subconsciously, maybe there's something to learn still. But there will be a, a moment in your life where you feel now it's enough. Now I'm done. Now I'm ready to just sit with the discomfort and to feel and to, exp to experience and to deepen and in that. It's and you. Then there's the wisdom. Yes, it is. Yes. Right? Then we move beyond just knowledge, right? Just knowledge, these pieces of factoids coming yes. in to true yes. wisdom, which is another something that the divine feminine can really yes. bring forward, right? Yes. The divine feminine is associated with that, that wisdom piece, taking the time, being receptive to the experience mm -hmm. in whatever it brought, what yeah. the mind makes up as good or bad. <laughs> You yes, know, in yeah. judgment, you just, yeah. okay, what is the wisdom in this? And allowing that to come through, what were the lessons? What were the blessings yes. that came through here? Because then, we're, then, then, then we can lead you. by example, yeah. And then we can share from this embodied state. And then I, I really love your example of the river. Because somehow, like, if, if you want to learn to ride these highways, you're not going to someone that only has the knowledge for a textbook, because that's not okay. But somehow in the spiritual world, there are a lot of people that that just that do it from the textbook instead of really living, by example, really feeling in every cell of their body. Just there, But there's a dynamic and it's feeling in the energy if it's aligned. If you, someone is only expressing words from understanding with the mind or they're expressing words from understanding with the heart. And somehow with the rafting, we do that. We see, okay, does anyone have any skills? And you want someone that has done this. <laughs> but somehow <laughs> in other, other areas of our lives, we don't, we don't do that. We somehow just think, okay, these are the beautiful, pretty words that our mind likes and not per se what our heart truly needs. And we go yes. for that instead of the, yeah. So I, I really love your example of riding the waves and <laughs> so and many I promise chances. everyone you have skills you have yeah. genetic traits built yes. into you that are unique to you yes you know, we yeah. see that map and design and when you excavate the design yes. even deeper you see even more like yes, yes how yes. unique um you are and yeah, yeah they're they're there yeah. it's just allowing them to really emerge and be and them be in that embodiment that we've been yes. talking about consciousness in form. I love how human design has that and yes. the spiritual community has that, right? Yeah. Bringing that in that yeah. we're not here to escape out of the body. We're not yeah. here to dismiss no. the body. The body yeah. has so its own wisdom yes. and we want the, it to marry yes. yeah. with the mind and yeah. with our consciousness and allow that the, to really the, the fullness to go. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and it is in the, because that, that's what I love in what you, like, it's in the deepening spiral that we get to discover our yeah. gifts. It's not in the understanding again with the mind, because that's as you go deeper, also in human design, as you shared, you will discover yeah. all these gifts, all your talents, all these, these, these magical things you took with you. But it's, it's again, being willing to stretch beyond, okay, I know my design and I just read one page and now I understand myself fully. No, go deeper because <laughs> it's the same with, with my book. And then, but I'm, I'm reading, rereading it every time because each time no. I reread it, I find different things. I find different tools, uh, deepening layers of love awaken within me. And, and I think that's the invitation for the future. Not per se new, new, yeah. new constantly. Dive deeper in what you already know. Dive deeper in your body, in your vessel, in human design, in all of these beautiful things. And and see yourself. I mean, this is, I've just been, uh, was it yesterday? I lose track of time here. I think it was just yesterday I was doing an interview and I'm talking about the primordial goddesses 
goddess Nyx and goddess Chaos mm-hmm. and goddess Gaia. Yes. Right? The night, these were feminine qualities that, you know, again, the patriarchy put all this fear into yeah. them and limiting beliefs. Chaos was originally the void, the chasm, right? Go in, like, come on into the void. But even when it shifted to chaos, yes, stay centered. You know, chaos knows how to stay centered within itself amidst the whirlwind that can be going on around you. And Gaia is all about, yes, the embodiment Mm -hmm. of the form and its transformational power and the wisdom, again, that it, it carries. So we can't be afraid to be in the night within yeah. and to be within the void and the chasms yeah. within us to actually get curious about what's in there oh know thyself right the yes, circle yeah. of delphi know thyself like yeah yes. don't be afraid it is and and i think for for me when i m- most of the things i created or that that i i was blessed to bring into this world were created from the void not from the mind space from being in this space of not knowing being in a space That's the true openness, creative space and just right? truly surrender yeah but it's <laughs> fearful but those are the most profound things and then suddenly things start to shift quickly and beautiful people and places and opportunities come on your path but it's again being not afraid for the darkness be not being afraid for this the yeah the light or, or the other yeah, the, the space of no nothingness it's almost like uh, the space of mm. not knowing and exactly it's not riding, the, riding the waves not of the, the new time. <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly exactly. thank you for sharing your enthusiasm your spark your your energy your if there's one last word or sentence you would want to share or yeah i think that just to remind everyone how beautiful and unique and gifted and magical magical you are yeah and to let that come out and Mm, let yourself sparkle let yourself shine let yourself just be you some of those words I get a little bit hesitant about because sometimes like people aren't like "Ah," (laughs) you know this kind of sparkle out there but there's kind of this contentment inside a real mm, peace within that yes yeah Yeah. I may not know everything about me Yes. But I'm on my journey. I'm on my path and I'm going to see where it takes me. And one step at a time, I'm going to do the work to move mm-hmm. through those yes. fears, to face them, to excavate what's there and all the wisdom that's there for me and move forward and share it. Share it. We're, this is my, um, sorry, I'm going a little on a tangent here, but this is one thing I think that we're we're starting to lose is that because of the perfectionist and the fears and so on, the wisdom of, especially as we get older, all this wisdom that we have, it's being kept inside mm. and it's, it's there to yeah. share, it's there to be shared. Yes. So let yourself be open to the wisdom of others, but also let your own wisdom yeah, come through. I love that. I see as you share, I see like this in ancient times, you had to, well, still, but these storytellers, and that's so beautiful, like the the elders sharing stories in their community in there. So I think that's beautiful because that's a gift. That's truly bringing the wisdom and our experiences to inspire others. Yeah. So Absolutely. thank you for sharing yeah. your energy, for sharing this space. And if you want to know <laughs> more about Margot and how you can work with her, you can find all the information below this video or audio. And I want to thank you, everyone, for tuning in and for your light into the world, your inspiration, your wisdom, your magic. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next Soul Love podcast. So for now, much love and see you in the next time. Bye. (laughs) Thank you for joining this episode of Soul Love. If you want to find out more about what we do, you can find it below. And I'll see you in the next episode. Much love.